That's right. Back at it again. Full custom hot dog here doing another Blu-ray review. That's right. That's right. And today we're going to be talking about Under the Silver Lake. Who moves out in the middle of the night? Nothing strange about it. She wanted to leave. How does that not make sense? I don't understand why she didn't tell me. Maybe she didn't like you. Maybe she knows you're poor and haven't paid your rent. A somewhat recent blind buy I made, I picked it up because I had heard so much about it. I, I mainly heard that it was divisive. People love it. People hate it. And those are the kind of movies that I f tend to gravitate to because I want to know how I feel. So I just didn't know what it was. I thought it was some kind of thriller, maybe. Maybe there's a killer. I knew Andrew Garfield was in there. I knew there was something about a record. That was one of the things I heard that somebody liked a record scene. And okay, well, I don't know what I'm getting into. I For some reason, I thought it was going to be like The Strangers, something something kind of slashery. Uh, it is released by A24. I tend I'm starting to do the Blu-ray stuff at the end of the video and talk about the movie first. So what is Under the Silver Lake about? Well, it's about Andrew Garfield's character, Sam, who's kind of a loser. And there's a lot to unpack here in this movie, so I'm gonna just give you the gist. Sam meets a young girl in his apartment complex, uh, Sarah. Falls in love with her, absolutely smitten, in, in, in but an evening. And then she disappears. Her apartment's empty. And now he's like, why would she move out? I got to find out what happened to her. Where'd she go? And he basically goes into the rabbit hole and deep, deep through mysteries and is trying to find out where she could have gone and what could have been. And he starts to uncover weird mysteries, all of this revolving in the Hollywood, L.A. area, a small part known as Silver Lake, a place I'm not too familiar with. I spent a little bit of time in L.A., but never Silver Lake. And there's a lot to unravel with this movie. It means to stay quiet. Our world is filled with codes, subliminal messages from Silver Lake to the Hollywood Hills. So the less you know, the much, much better. It's also a movie I don't know who to recommend. I know I say that a lot when movies are kind of weird or complicated, and this one especially. It's a neo-noir. If you like noir films and neo-noir, this may be up your alley. There's some Lynchian vibes as well, so you're going to see some things that may not make a lot of sense. For the most part, I think it's a fairly grounded film. Some people kind of have some weird interpretations of this movie saying, oh, maybe this was fake, this was fake. I think this movie telegraphs what is a dream very, very obviously. I think it very much tells you when something isn't to be believed and the rest is grounded. And I think that's what makes it so great is the things that are grounded are wild and I love them. I put this on. I didn't expect to be so involved. I thought it was going to be a slasher, so I think I was working on something at the same time, and it grabbed my attention, and I couldn't. It, it just wouldn't let go, and I was entranced by this movie. It shot up to my top 10 favorite films of all time, and you might be saying, Hot Dog, that's crazy. It is crazy, and I'm actually working on an edited video. I'm just about done writing it of how to watch this movie, and again, you're probably thinking, like, why? And that's because there is so much happening here the first viewing just doesn't do it justice. There's a lot of layers of things and every single choice in this film is very deliberate. There's a lot of questions that don't get answered obviously, but the answers are hidden in the movie. There's a lot of symbolism, a lot of weird secrets in this movie. It sort of makes the the discussion around uh, that, that Room 237 Shining documentary, it makes that look sane. Just because all the stuff here, there, there are secret codes and messages of course, telling somebody that they're going to think you're nuts, but there definitely are. And that's what the video I'm working on is going to cover. So so it does kind of sound like that room 237 discussion on the, you know, is this a moon landing? Now, some people do seem to think that, oh, maybe the director, David Robert Mitchell, by the way, maybe maybe David Robert Mitchell was trying to alarm people or warn people of these weird things happening in Hollywood. I don't think so, but I could see how you, you would. This almost feels like a, a noir meets like Holy Mountain or something just because of all this, uh, the, again, the symbolism, the, the not even just the metaphor, these things that link to each other. I brought this up on another episode, I don't know what, but if you ever heard the, the, uh, the commentary for Holy Mountain, Jodorowsky breaks down every scene 
into exactly what every single thing means and doing the digging and research I have with this film, there's quite a lot of that as well, which only made me like it more and more. And every single additional rewatch is that much more enjoyable. There's even a, uh, I mentioned Sam is played by Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield wakes up in one scene holding a Spider-Man issue. Something as small as that can be very easily interpreted as an Easter egg, of course, because duh, he was Spider-Man. But that was already in the script, the exact issue and everything. There are so many wild things here that are that are done on purpose and things that link. You can see all kinds of... I know, I sound like a crazy person. You probably think it's this always sunny meme. There is no Pepe Silvia. The man does not exist, okay? So I decided, oh, shit, buddy. I got to dig a little deeper. But no, there's so many things that are incredibly deliberate behind amounts of people numbers, numerology, all that kind of stuff, which makes it so fun to watch if you go in with that mindset. So I did mention this was directed by David Robert Mitchell. His prior films were uh, The Myth of the American Sleepover, which gets heavily referenced here, and also It Follows, which is a, an absolute banger of a film. The soundtrack to this as well, very good, done by Disaster Peace. Who, uh, there's a main song that's performed by Silver Sun Pickups, but he wrote it, and that song's great. There's even weird mysteries in that song as well. Again, this stuff's all going to be covered in the future video I end up doing. The movie fires on all cylinders, and again, you may like that kind of stuff, you may not. It's at least worth a solo watch. The only problem is it doesn't seem to be streaming in a lot of places. If you have Canopy, that's where it was when the last times I checked. Now, on the Blu-ray itself, you know, picture, sound, everything's fine. It's a newer movie, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you've got two different special features. What lies under the Silver Lake and Beautiful Spectre. So one of these is an interview with someone who worked on some of the set design. That is pretty good, especially if you're into more of the mystery aspect of this film, as he definitely talks about some of the choices that were a little bit more deliberate, some of the calls they had to make and the things they did. Uh, the second one is an interview with Disaster Piece, as he just sort of talks about forging the soundtrack and also how he got to finally work with like an orchestra instead of doing the normal uh, digital production type stuff. So both are pretty good. I wish there was more. I would have loved a commentary with David Robert Mitchell just breaking everything down and just sort of going into everything. But on the other side, you know, having these mysteries not answered is very fun. If, you, if you've watched this and you're like, yeah, that wasn't about anything, I highly recommend checking out the subreddit for Under the Silver Lake as it is still fairly active as people bring up new things all the time on this movie. This movie's from 2018 and people are still finding things in there and it's, it's really fun and cool to kind of analyze. And like I mentioned, every time I watch this, I come out with something new. Fantastic film. I hope, I hope you like it if you do watch it, though I don't know if I can recommend it to you. Hmm. I guess if you're into things like David Lynch, the neo-noirs, then this may be right up your alley. And it's dark. It gets kind of weird. It's one of my favorite A24 films. I probably would have said my favorite, except for the fact that Everything Everywhere All at Once came out this year. And that movie is incredible, right? If you haven't seen that, go see that. Go see this. Go see every movie that you can. But Under the Silver Lake is great. Great performances all around. One thing I like that it really does, I mentioned earlier the whole thing of it being very distinct when something's not grounded, is that the grounded stuff is so surreal and is on the cusp of being believable. And I think that's something really hard for filmmakers and anybody to really pull off is to give you this grounded world and take you down these dark corridors and weird twists and be able to show you something that's that still exists in this world that could exist here with us, um, but is almost unbelievable. You know, it's kind of it, it's also interesting to see where you hear these these tales and rumors of Hollywood cults and cabals and secret. If you haven't seen Starry Eyes, something like that, where there's a satanic cult in Hollywood. And this movie is almost the surface of that and bringing you more conspiracies. So you can kind of see why people think that this might point to something in real life. I don't think so. But who knows what mysteries lie Under the silver lake.
Anyways, I am Full Custom Hot Dog. You can follow me on Twitter. It's Full Custom Hot Dog without the last O, because that's just too long for Twitter. So thank you all for watching. And until next time. If you like what you see, I love what I see. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications so you can watch whatever comes next. And if you like the music you hear, you can follow me on SoundCloud and Spotify. Check the description for links.